the appropriate response is, come on folks, you can do better than that. Thank you, uh, thank you musicians for our music today. The Lord be with you. And the good news of the gospel is, Emmanuel, God is with us. The Lord is already with us and will be with us. My name is John Simmons, and along with Emily Bagwell and Elizabeth Labello Edwards and our great musicians and an organ that is, as of today, Craig says, at 100%. And we'll be acknowledging that in a little bit. And, and a great organist, oh, by the way. Thank you, Craig. And this congregation, this community of faith. I welcome all of you to our worship experience here at St. James on this Pentecost Sunday today. The attendance registration pads are in each one of the pews, and I invite you to, to sign those, pass those down, uh, if you will, at this time. And uh, if we've not been in touch with you, if you could particularly put a telephone number and an email address down today. Uh, the announcements are in your bulletin for you to know the things that are going on in the life of this church. Um, I particularly want to call to your attention, and you'll hear more about it, the, the, the prayer that's in the insert is the product of a, n a number of different uh, churches and synagogues gathering together to come together for a prayer for Atlanta. And we'll be uh, having that prayer as a part of our litany today. Uh, it was the hope that there would be something in the newspaper because, so that you could see the number of churches in Atlanta that are praying this prayer today. And, uh, and with the, the encouragement of the, many of the pastors, including your three appointed clergy here at St. James. Uh, this is Pentecost, uh, the day that we celebrate the birth of the church and the coming of the Spirit, and you'll be hearing more about that as we continue in worship today. I want to call Guy Powell to come forward now for a word about our organ renovation. Guy? Thank you, John. Um, morning. So uh, I just wanted to let you know, I am the uh, chairperson of the St. James Music Committee, and also the chancel choir president. And today, as John mentioned, that after a nearly a year, our organ, organ restoration project is now finished. Uh, Parkey organ builders spent many, many hours working to renovate the instrument, giving it a really much needed overhaul that had not been done since its 1968 installation. Thanks to the generous gift of a St. James family, a new oboe stop was also added to the instrument. This new oboe will be featured during the call to prayer later in the service. In addition to the new oboe, an existing group of stops in the uh, principal chorus division was redesigned and balanced to better fit our vast and really beautiful sanctuary. To keep it simple, that part of the organ now just sounds much fuller, but it's certainly a lot more complex than that. We are thankful to uh, Parkey Organ Builders for their diligent work and Michael Morris, uh, their organ designer, is here with us today. And Michael, if you would uh, stand, please. Thank you, Michael, for all of your hard work. And please, please pass on our sincere appreciation to Phil Parkey and your entire uh, team for a job really well done. We hope that this will keep our instrument going for at least another 50 years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guy. It's a great day uh, because that is such an important part of our worship together. I want to call on Nancy Vice now for an announcement from the Staff Parish Committee. Good morning. As all of you know, our beloved senior pastor, John Simmons, is retiring, and today is our last Sunday with him. Uh, following this service, there will be a farewell reception for John and Helen in the Fellowship Hall. I hope you all will plan on attending so that we can send John and Helen off with our love and our gratitude. Thank you. The worship of God means that we get connected with the love of God as we love God and as we share that love with others. So I invite you now to stand and to welcome and greet one another as we continue in the worship of God.
And even more importantly, we're here because God called us here. And uh, we are here so that we can renew our uh, connection and our relationship with God. So I invite you now to pause for a moment of silent personal prayer as we continue now in the worship of God. Let us pray. Please stand as you're able as we join our voices together in the call to worship as printed in your order of worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Amen. Let us now lift our voices together with hymn number 539, O Spirit of the Living God.
please be seated and the children are invited to come forward at this time for a moment with children with, with Miss Erin. morning everybody do you remember this we say Christ is risen Christ is risen indeed today is a, the special ending to our whole Easter season I mean we're always Easter people but today is a special holiday does anybody know what it's called Pentecost today is Pentecost and that's why up on the the altar up there it's covered with candles and light. what color do you see that? Red. Do you know what red's for? Fire. fire, right. Today we celebrate the fire of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when we talk about the Spirit, we talk about fire a lot. Because the Spirit isn't a person, but the Spirit is a feeling that like moves like fire and is uncontrolled. And when we go down to hear a little bit more about the Pentecost story, but what I want to tell you about is that the gift of the Spirit is just exactly that. It is a gift it's a present. It's God giving something to us of God's very heart, and God is giving that to us. Today, because it's also another different kind of special Sunday, we are going to give a gift to someone else. Yeah? We are going to give a gift to Pastor John because all of us have been, um, we've learned a lot from him, and we've listened to him, and he has cared for us. And so we're going to invite Pastor John to come on down. And um, Matt, can you, behind you, Dr. Simmons, you have given us so much. You have shared your stories and stories from the Bible, and you have cared for us and loved us. You have baptized us, prayed for us. Thank you for giving to us. We want you to carry our love in your heart as you leave St. James. As you enjoy this gift from us, remember that you have left your fingerprints on our hearts and our faith. Thank you. But you can't guess your prints. See what it was. See what it was. I put some fingerprints on it. I think it's real bird. That is so. Look at it. Isn't that nice? A bird. And now, remember when we do a baptism, do you remember how we put our blessing on the blanket that we give for baptism? What I'd like you to do is we're all going to scooch around Dr. John and we're gonna put our blessings on him. Can we do that? You just gotta sit in the middle of all of us. Go ahead and stand up. Put a hand on him. Everybody squeeze in, you gotta reach. Come on around here. Come on around this way. <laughs> that was good. Way to go, guys. Do you guys have your blessings all in your hands? We're going to rub them all over him. <laughs> okay, if you can just reach your hand and touch somebody who's touching him, too, that'll work, too. 
That'll work. All right, let's say a prayer together. Will you guys repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for the gift of Dr. Simmons. And thank you for the Spirit as a gift in our life. Go with John and Helen and stay here with us. Inspire us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go with God. Thank you. This is great. Just where this are um, second grade and under. You can join me over here. We'll go downstairs for worship and wonder, or you can go back and sit with your folks. Thank you. What a gift it is to this congregation, the, the spirit moving through our children that are here and present and leading us in worship in a variety of different ways. I invite us now to hear this reading from the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 24. If you would like to follow along and, and read in your pew Bible, you can find that on page 144 in the New Testament portion of your, of your Bible. But I invite us all to open our hearts and minds and ears to God's Spirit moving in this scripture that is before us today. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is, is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
This is a reading from Holy Scripture for us, the people of God. Our thanks Thanks be be to God. God.
Amen and amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. As God's gathered people in this space, it is our joy to have the opportunity as God's people to share and express those joys and concerns that are on our hearts. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. God is indeed alive, living and breathing and moving amongst us. And as we come into this space as God's people, we each come with things on our hearts and minds, and it is our joy to have the space and our worship together to voice and to reflect those things that are on our hearts and minds. And so I invite you to be aware with me of the concerns of this congregation. You'll see as a part of your order of worship a gray box at the bottom that is entitled Prayer Concerns. But we know that as you come into this space, you do have those things that you carry. And this is our opportunity to receive God and be received by God. I do want to give you two pastoral updates that are not there present in your bulletin. One is that you'll see Rebecca Van Martyr is the last one listed on that. She passed away this past week, and we will be having a service for her and for her family to celebrate her life later on this week. And we'll send out information on Monday about those arrangements. We certainly want to be in prayer for her family. Also, we received word this morning that Lisa Weldon's mother passed away, who um, we've been praying for for a long time, so we certainly want to be in prayer for Lisa and her family. Now, as we turn our hearts and minds to that moving spirit of God, may we be open to hearing this call to prayer that invites us into this space together today.
for our shared prayer together this morning. I would invite you to find the insert that you uh, received as in the inside part of your bulletin as you came in. And on one side, you'll see an order of farewell that we will use later on in the service. But on the other side, you'll see it entitled Atlanta Together. As John mentioned earlier, as we gathered during the announcements, this is an, a concerted effort among different faith leaders in the Atlanta community to do and embody exactly what some of those early Christians were exploring, how to express the movement and aliveness of God, the spirit at work and moving in the united way by uniting our voices. And so this was a prayer that was created that churches all throughout the Atlanta area might together with one voice be expressing this prayer, lifting it up to God. And so we join with many others around our city together praying this prayer as God's united people. I invite you to join me in the bold portions as we offer this prayer now before God. We live in an obviously divided world, politically, socially, geographically, racially, and in a number of other ways. This is not what God wants for us. We are to be focused on others, lead with love, and trust in our kinship as children of the Almighty. In light of this, houses of worship across the city offer this prayer to God as we seek the welfare of Atlanta together. O oh God, we praise you for your holiness, justice, and mercy. We confess that we often look away from your will to our own self-interest. We confess our fears, self-centeredness, and lack of faith in you and in one another. We thank you, God, for the incredible blessing of our city, state, and nation, where we are free to worship and express the convictions of our hearts. We thank you that we live in a place of democracy, where all people have a chance to be heard. We pray that you would make us a people of compassion, gentleness, mutual respect, and civility. We pray that you would help us to truly believe that all men and women are created equal and guide us as we strive to be a nation of liberty, equality, and justice for all. Particularly, we thank you for how you have cared for Atlanta. Through war, destruction, division, growth, and challenge, you have preserved our city from the ashes and caused it to flourish. We thank you for the whole of our city, as we believe that every part of Atlanta makes it a better whole. As people of faith, we have learned to look not only to our own interests, but also to the interests of others. And we pray that you would help us in this. Help us to be an outward focused people who are concerned for one another and unified in our concern for the well-being of every Atlantan. We pray that every member of our congregation would work to be a blessing to Atlanta. We ask that you heal deep divides by creating new and lasting bonds of kinship across the city. We ask that you unite our great city in ways previously unimagined that will bring prosperity wellness, and a sense of belonging to every Atlanta resident. We pray for the unity of your children in this great city. We pray for an Atlanta together, this day and forevermore. We humbly ask for your care and help in these things. Amen. I would now invite us to respond to the gifts and graces of God at move, moving in our lives. I invite the ushers to come forward as we prepare to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. This is an opportunity for us to give back and be engaged with this community as we seek to serve many of God's people or in this church and throughout uh, this city and in our community. Now let us give with joyful and happy hearts as we give back to God today.
Our hymn is in the black hymnal, The Faith We Sing, number 2009, O God Beyond All Praising, number 2009. Remain standing as you are able as we turn together to the Gospel of John. The Gospel lesson this morning is John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. May our hearts and minds and ears be open as we hear the Gospel this morning. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, 
yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is a reading of Holy Scripture for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. You may be seated. Before I begin, I must say a word of thanks to our musicians today, the choir and the, the Gate City uh, Brass uh, for an extraordinary uh, blessing that all of us have received as we worship today. And Craig, thank you. And uh, those who commissioned the, the piece that Craig played, we, I'm grateful for that also. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Gather us together, Lord, by the power of your Spirit. May we uh, drink richly and fully of the grace, the gift that you have given, and know that it is you who gives it, and that we are blessed. Amen. Looking back, I could have anticipated that this was going to happen, uh, that, that I would be woken up at 2.30 in the morning with a sermon. I've told you before that, that this happens about twice a year, that, that a sermon will appear in the middle of the night. Why does it have to be 2.30? And it says to me, here I am, are you going to get up and write me down or not? So from 2.30 to 4 o'clock on Sunday night, Monday morning, I was writing down a sermon. Uh, I, I went to bed with a notion of where the sermon might be going. I thought I had an idea of what the metaphor, the image might be for this, my last Sunday, and this Pentecost Sunday. I sent it out in the Word on Wednesday this week. It's, it's another one of the images from uh, Sister Joan Chittener in her book, The Rule of St. Benedict. It's the ancient story of the great leader who's about to die. Now, I'm not dying. I'm glad to be alive, but my role around here is changing from being a pastor friend to being a friend. Uh, so the story goes that the, the great leader is about to die and the disciples are gathered around saying to the great leader, how can we ever see without you here with us? And the the teacher says to them, all I've done is sit by the river and hand out cups of water to you. It is my hope that after I'm gone, you'll be able to see the water. We live by a river, but a lot of times we don't know it. We can't see it. I thought that story would be good for today and then at 2 30 in the morning i woke up and it was there uh, our son rob uh, was the start of this sermon this thing that appeared to me rob uh, i think it was 11 years ago rob that you were a counselor at camp glisten and i think that it was pentecost sunday actually that i'd been asked to go back to the church i started in roswell we'd been gone for maybe 15 years and and um rob uh was had to be back at camp glisten early in the afternoon but but he was able to stay through the first two of those three services that day and i told people 
when they came to worship that day, I said, I've got so many stories. I, I've got three different sermons. They, they kind of have the same theme, but, but they're all um, different from each other. And Rob told me later, he said, Dad, that was pretty amazing because he left, we left there when Rob was going in the second grade. And Rob said, and I didn't know any of those stories. And it was so good to hear them. And that's what woke me up at 2.30 in the morning. It's like all my life is comprised of cups of water, of what have been for me great stories that I've been able to pass out and share with others and maybe even more importantly receive from others. Stories like the first day I was uh, visiting starting to see if I could find people who might want to be a part of a new Methodist church in Roswell that became Northbrook Church and uh, Helen really was pretty skeptical. Why would anybody join a church that's just a piece of land? Uh, I said, I don't know, but I, I'm going to go ring doorbells and find out. And on the first day, on the first day, I was ringing doorbells in our own neighborhood, figuring you need to start close to home. And I went to a particular house, and uh, the I gave the same thing I would say at, I rang, must have rung a thousand doorbells, and I probably talked to 200 people. People are never at home anymore. But I did talk to about 200 people, and I'd say the same thing. My name is John Simmons. I'm starting a new Methodist church on Crabapple Road, and I want to know if you have a church home, if you might be interested in belonging to a, a new United Methodist congregation. And in this house on that first day, a woman and her maybe 10-year-old son were at the door, and I gave my spiel, and she responded, no, thank you, we're Catholic. And the son looked up at her mother and said, we're Catholic? <laughs> it, on, on one level, I, I need to acknowledge that I think all of us can be clear that is, if you're Catholic, you know it, and there can be no doubt about it, but on a deeper, more profound level, I was moving into a neighborhood where people didn't know their identity. And that's been one of the metaphors, the cups of water that have motivated me to keep ringing doorbells and meeting people because People, n not only have they not uh, shared in a cup, not have a clue that there's an abundance of water, much less know that there's a river that's flowing right next to them that they can participate in. Um, so many stories, so much uh, of the gifts of God that I've been able to hand out in little cups of water to people along the way. Uh, in my mind's eye, in my heart's eye today, I've been uh, so grateful for the, the theme that I've been working on for now about six weeks, the, that uh, Ephesians 1.18, uh, where Paul prays, and it's a prayer for me and for you. Uh, I pray that... Uh, eyes of your heart might have enough light so that you can see and then he has three or four things that we are to see the the hope that is God's call the the inheritance the rich inheritance among believers and the the power that's at work among us believers and what's the source of that power that brings us to Pentecost today that's the, the cup, if you will, but it's a, it's a mighty big cup, and it's, it's got so many different images that works with this cup because on the day of Pentecost, that Jewish holiday, uh, Pentecost means the 50, and it's uh, also called in the Jewish faith the Festival of Weeks, W-E-E-K-S. This, this is the nerdy me that needs to talk about this for just a minute. Y'all just bear with me. 
um, the Festival of Weeks, and all the Jews showed up in Jerusalem for this Pentecost celebration. So many of them celebrating that day, and, well, the disciples went in an upper room because they were really confused now. What is going on? First of all, this great leader Jesus, this Messiah, had been killed on the cross. And then this thing called the resurrection happened. And what sense are we to make out of this? What is God up to? And then, and then just before Pentecost, there's this thing called the ascension where Jesus goes up into heaven and they're saying, and where is he gone now? And what's supposed to happen next? And they are confused in that upper room. And, well, the, the story of the handing out of the cups of water helped me to understand what Pentecost is about. Because it's Pentecost is the story then of the mighty wind blowing and the, the, the fire as tongues of fire descending. And, and those disciples, those uneducated Galileans by every report could speak all these different languages of all these people that are there. What's all this about? What is God doing and saying to us? The, the nerd in me has preached so many Pentecost sermons about, well, it's, it's the Tower of Babel in Genesis and how people were trying to make something of themselves and, and build themselves up and build this tower and, and make themselves great. And God confused their languages and they're no longer speaking one language the Tower of Babel story tells us they were no longer at one they no longer understood one another because because they were trying to make themselves great and Pentecost is the opposite the anecdote if you will because Pentecost they were able to speak and understand and be heard. Um, and that's why we're here. That's the, that's the river. That's the water. That's the cup that we might partake of something that reminds us that we're involved in something bigger than ourselves. And we receive it. So many stories in my uh, heart, the eye of my heart, I, I have imagine this moment right now and the the best metaphor I have is Wayne Gretzky the the hockey player who said that when he plays hockey the whole game slows down and we can see and realize where we are and whose we are and how we are and that's what I feel about this moment right now I can look out there and <laughs> I've got a zillion stories about each one of you. So many of you here. I've been with you. Uh, we've shared cups of water together. I've got so many stories. The end of John's Gospel said, if all the stories could be whole, they would fill up all the books that have ever been written. And that's the way I feel today. Um, just one story. Uh, Lily Falaw, little girl, when she was a year and a half old, she was at the early service, and she came for communion at one and a half years old, and she had her hands out like this to receive communion. And I thought to myself, that's why I'm here, that's why we're here. That's the cup of water for today. That's the power of God that comes to us and sometimes like a wind and sometimes like a like a fire so many stories and so misun so much misunderstanding that gospel story we've got today of of Nicodemus saying what do you mean born from above what do you mean what do you how can that possibly be I don't get it I don't understand it and we gather for worship so that there can be a cup of water shared and the possibility that each one of us can see the water. So many children baptized, so many hospital visits, so many funerals, 
so many times that, that I've shared, uh, particularly with my Wednesday morning uh, prayer group or, or the Wednesday pastoral teaching. So many times we have shared cups of water together and in worship I've asked to, to put a cup of water before you. Nicodemus, we don't know if he got it or not. At the end of the story, he did take care of the body of Jesus. He was a Pharisee and a, obedient to the law. And we are gathered here so that we might understand what God's way is and then be able to see beyond the cup of water to the enormous amount of water available to each of us. The water is the gift of life. The wind from the very beginning has been the sign of God's Spirit blowing among the people. And the fire has been God's love and is God's love and will be God's love. A cup of water that we share in this time together with the prayer that the eyes of our hearts will have enough light that we can see what God is up to in our lives. So now as I put down the cup and allow somebody else to pick up the cup, may we give God thanks for the river and the wind and the fire. Thanks be to God. I invite Jennifer Intrican, the chair of our worship committee, to come forward now. And if Helen will come forward and for, as we join together in the order of farewell. Friends. If you will please join together in an order of farewell, which is printed on the one side of your insert in your bulletin, we will join together at the bold printed portions. Today is a bittersweet day for us as we bid a heartfelt farewell to our beloved senior pastor, Reverend Dr. John Simmons, on the occasion of his retirement. For the past 44 years, John has been a faithful and loyal servant as he has served numerous churches in the North Georgia Conference as well as being a district superintendent and a conference staff member. We here at St. James United Methodist have known him as our preacher and our teacher. This is the role that he gave himself on the very first Sunday with us nearly six years ago. We must also acknowledge the gifts and the service of Helen Simmons. Helen has given her energy, her enthusiasm, and her grace as she has served side by side with John. Today is John and Helen's 40th wedding anniversary, so it is especially appropriate that we honor and celebrate them together with their beautiful children and grandchildren on this glorious and joyful Sunday in the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, we thank, thank you, members, members and friends of St. James United, United Methodist, Methodist Church, Church for, for the, the love and support you have shown us while we have been among you. As we leave, we carry with us the rich experience of the life of this congregation, and we hold you in our hearts. I'm grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted, and I ask for your forgiveness for the mistakes that I've made. And I accept your forgiveness, and I forgive you. I now release you from turning to me and depending on me as one of your pastors. We accept your gratitude. May our parting be pleasing to God. 
We encourage your continuing ministry here, and we pray for you and your new pastors, Max and Anna Kate, and their families. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting, we give you thanks for cherished memories and commend one another to your care as we move in different directions. Keep us one in your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is a, our family favorite. Now thank we all our God. It, it shows up at weddings and funerals and family occasions. I invite you to turn to page 102 in your United Methodist hymnal and stand as you're able as we sing number 102. from this place as a people who are slowed down enough to see the river. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion and fellowship and fire of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always.